Hello, friends! Good to see you again! It's me, Miss Mithril. I hope I didn't surprise you too much, because I'm not wearing what I usually wear today. It's Friday, so I thought I'd be a little silly today. Can you see what's different about me? What's different? Is it... Is it my nose? No? No? Is it my eyes? No? Hmm. Oh, did I gain some muscle? You want muscle? What do you think? Yeah. Oh. What's different? <laughs> you got me antlers today on Fridays. It's nice to do something a little different. It's healthy too. You can't go around all the time just doing the same thing every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. <sighs> well, I mean you could, but it's not as fun. <laughs> well, <clears throat> as you may know, this is where we're wrapping up our talk on things that fly or that go in the air. Well, we've been talking about a little bit of both. Do you remember the kind of things we talked about? We had a visit from a little story that had an owl in it. The owl went on the farm and he found himself friends amongst what animal? Pop quiz. Hens. That's right. What did the hens want him to be? A rooster. But he couldn't be a rooster because he was too busy being an owl. And then the other day, we talked about what? Let's well, go in the air that has metal wings. Airplanes. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and about the video I plan to make, I did go outside and I flew it. The airplane, I mean. And it crashed quite a bit because it's made of cheap foam. But that's okay. Unfortunately, I was not able to get it to load yet. So I'm going to postpone that just until I can get it to work. I'm going to work some more at it. You know I love sharing stuff with you. <laughs> Ideas, stories, lessons, just entertaining stuff. Mm, that might be educational at the same time. <laughs> Let's see, what else did we talk about that this week? What was big and colorful and was really wide and on the picture it goes roar! Our dragon kite, that's right. Which, no, oh, I guess I took it downstairs. It was kind of windy yesterday. I wanted to fly it, but didn't get around to it. It's really busy. But, not to worry. I got one more thing to share with you right now. Whoop! And it's going to kind of go into what we're going to be talking about next week. Do you know what this is? Yep, it's a bird. It's a bird made out of paper. In some ancient cultures, you can fold paper very carefully, very gently to make all sorts of fun things. In this case, this person took this piece of paper and turned it into a swallow, which is a type of bird. <laughs> and the thing with origami is you can pick all sorts of things. I should know. I've taken a couple of basic origami classes. I made a box. That's right. One time I made a box out of paper. No joke. And inside that box I made me a fish. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Alright. So if you're curious what kind of special paper here it is, what kind of special paper that you use to make origamis, perfectly square paper like this. Now what makes this so special is, other than some pieces are shiny, is the paper, it's not like your normal printer paper or maybe your school book paper. It's, it feels a little different than most paper. It feels a little harder, for lack of a better word. It's not hard, but it's sturdy. There you go, that's a good word. It's nice and strong, so when you fold it, you can do all sorts of amazing things and make things from it. For example, look on the back here. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a crane or even a frog. Do you see that green frog? <laughs> when we talk next week, 
I plan on doing some basic practice because it's been a while since I've done origami and I'll show you how to make something with origami paper. Now I'm not sure what to get if I wanted to be a frog yet. We'll have to see. However, if you have something that you'd like to see, <laughs> be sure to let me know. Leave me a comment. Do you want the frog or do you think I should make something else? Help me decide. Alright, so as of right now, it is time for that special what time? Time time, that's right. Time time, time time. Let's get ready for time 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 time. Alrighty, here we go. The red hand points to the big number, which is our what hand? Our hand. And what's the blue hand? The minute hand. Alright, and right now it is 1107. 1107. You can see the red hand is on the 11, and the long blue hand is just after the 1, because 1 stands for 5 in minutes. Alright, let's do our review of 5 times tables real quick. You ready? 5, 10, whoops, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and that's our five times table. Good job. Analog and digital. All right. So that aside, it is now time for our schedule time, and I think you're really going to like this story. I know I always say that all the time, but these stories are great. I do love good stories. Alrighty, here we go. The agenda for today, no surprise, is one of three things. Which one is it? That's right, story time. S-T-O-R-Y, story. Let's get that X. Put it right next to the word story. And we are going to read today a very nifty book. Have you ever heard of a character by the name of Fly Guy? It is an amazing little chapter book that I think you're going to like. Now, don't be intimidated just because it's another chapter book. <laughs> There's a lot of great chapter books that aren't don't necessarily have to be for just big kids. Anyone can enjoy these chapter books. Here it is. It's called Ride, Fly Guy, Ride. <laughs> and there he is. See his little fly wings? And these books are so neat because they are nice and sparkly, too. Today we are reading Ride, Fly Guy, Ride by Ted Arnold. Ride, Fly Guy, Ride by Ted Arnold. A boy had a pet fly. He named him Fly Guy. And Fly Guy could say the boy's name. Buzz. <laughs> Chapter 1. One day, Dad said, Who wants to go for a ride? We do, said Buzz and Fly Guy. Buzz. Everyone buckled up. Dad said. Then they hit the road with the windows down. Buzz stuck his hand out the window and pretended he was an airplane. Suddenly, wind blew in the car and carried Fly Guy out the window. and into a passing truck. Uh -huh. Chapter two. Follow that truck, cried Buzz. Well, meanwhile in the truck, Fly Guy tumbled into the dry truck driver's mouth. <clears throat> the truck 
gyro spit fly guy out the window. You see that? The truck's going over a bridge. And fly guy got spit into a what? A boat. That's right. And into a passing motorboat. <laughs> cried Bo Buzz. Meanwhile on the boat, Fly Guy saw a man put a bug on a big hook. <gasps> Fly Guy jumped overboard and onto a passing circus train. train cried buzz meanwhile on the train fly guy surprised a sleepy elephant <coughs> the elephant blew him off the train <coughs> and onto an airplane Buzz. Meanwhile, on the airplane, the pilot saw Fly Guy and turned on the wipers. I didn't skip a page. <laughs> Just then, a rocket roared up from the ground. <laughs> Chapter 3. Follow that rocket! cried Buzz. Buzz and Dad landed. The race into space. Will Fly Guy survive? asked Buzz. Buzz, the rocket didn't take you to space. Oh. Dad said, let's ride home. And Fly Guy said, more rides. <laughs> oh my goodness if it wasn't one thing it was another with Fly Guy <laughs> do you remember the different automobiles or the different forms of machines that were in the air what did we see yeah we saw a plane a plane flies up in the air <laughs> but they're so big they need a lot of space 
in order to take off in the first place. What you see right here is called the runway. That's where the plane takes off. Then after that, where was Buzz and his dad? In a helicopter, high above the clouds. And then there was one more thing that went off towards space. It was going to be a rocket ship. <laughs> Look at that colorful rocket ship. You see this little area right here? A little bulb? That's where the driver goes, or the pilot. So we saw various things that go in the air. Oh, there's also one more. Do you know what this is? We've read about it before. Buzz and his dad were floating down in parachutes. Parachutes are kind of like really big and really round blankets. But they're not made out of fabric like most blankets are. They are made of a material, kind of like a plastic feeling kind of material, that helps you float down if you've jumped out from a really, really high altitude. So if you're jumping out of a plane, or if you needed to jump off a rocket ship, I would hope not. But that could work too, I suppose. Every person, including pilots of all sorts that need to fly up in the air, for safety's sake, they have parachutes. So if you are ever flying in a plane, turn to your mommy and daddy and ask them, where do you think the parachutes are? <laughs> all right. So we have moved on from story time. And it's time to move to fun time. So we've moved on from story time. We're going to get done with fun time. Get your checker fingers out for me. On the count of three, we're going to check off story. One, two, three, and check. Here we go. And we are done with story time. Now, the fun part. This activity is going to be a little short. I'm not going to be building the whole thing, but I'm going to be showing you some basic shapes that you can use if you decided to build yourself a toy rocket. Just like the rocket ship we saw in the book. Let me open up the page real quick to show you what I mean. As you can see, just like with most things, this rocket ship has a lot of different shapes that are used to help build it. Do you see any particular shapes? Yeah, we have a bit of a rectangle here, Whoop. and the pilot's area is a bit of an oval shape, and the pointed por portion right here, the blue, is a bit triangular, or maybe even a cone shape. Alrighty, I um, will be right back in just a second. Hang tight, maybe go get yourself a cup of water. Oh, now would be a perfect time to go wash your hands for just a minute and then come right back. See you soon.
well, 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 welcome back, friends. Here we go, we got some basic equipment I'm going to use, and, oh, don't mind the origami bird. Just didn't have anywhere else for him to go. We can pretend that he's just watching us. <laughs> Let's put him right here for now. So, as you can see right here, I have myself a normal paper towel, or excuse me, toilet, mm. <laughs> paper towel roll. What I did special with this one is I put two slits down on the sides right here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those in a second. Actually, I could probably do to do two more. Eh, actually, let's just leave it at that so I can show you basically what I'm going to do. So you can do this once, or you can cut them again on the other sides and do it twice. But I'm going to show you one angle or one shape you can use to make the tail parts down at the bottom of the rocket. All right, watch carefully. So this shape we have, you might recognize it from class. It's a pretty odd shape, but it's also very helpful. It's called a rhombus. All right, so we have this rhombus here. Rhombus, like a square or a rectangle, has four sides. Okay. See what I did there? nice size rhombus and oh I don't know comparing this it might be a bit big well for this demonstration not too worried about it so I'm gonna very carefully cut it out right, check out what I'm gonna do with this rhombus as we've talked about before shapes are everywhere in the world and the more that you can take the time to observe and notice the different shapes that we have the more you can be encouraged and inspired to grow your mind and your imagination and make different things from it. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I did when I saw this paper towel roll. I said to myself, Mithril, we are talking about things that fly this week. And I bet you, you can make a rocket and take a rhombus and have it make a tail down the base. And there we go. We got the bottom part of the rocket. Whoa, but it's not complete, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. Now, the reason why I have this spotted game right here. Again, shapes are in everything. You can use them to do all sorts of different things with. And be very careful because I don't want to get marker, permanent marker, that all over my container. If I do, oh well. Okay, so I roughly have a circle here. Oh, not a bad circle. I'd say it's like 97.5% perfect. So I'm going to really quickly take out this circle. I'm going to show you something very special. You may recall something similar that I did before when we were talking about shapes. You remember how shapes come off of the paper and they turn into something else or they get a different name? The circle can become a cone. And simply to make a cone, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line. I'm kind of eyeballing this, so it might not be perfect. I'm going to make that dot first. See that dot? How I have it right in the middle? I'm going to draw that line out to the side like this. And if you decide to do something like this at home, for whatever kind of project you do, you might need a little bit of help from mom and dad, or big brother or big sister. But regardless, it will be a lot of fun. I promise. All right, so you're going to cut it very carefully. Don't cut it all the way. Just cut it to where the circle, the little dot stops. Okay, and you see how we have that? Ow, 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 ow. Kind of reminds me of a favorite video game character that likes to eat dots. Ow, 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 ow. And chase ghosts. Ah. All right. What you're going to do? You're going to take the sides and you're going to slide it. And you see that? It's starting to make a cone. Look at that. All right, I'm going to take this little bit of, whoops. I'm going to take this tape. Tape it right there. And look at that. I have myself a cone. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and welcome back, friends. I have a friend saying hello. Hello, fluffers. Welcome back. Alrighty. Now, this is actually something I've always had trouble with. Ah. 
keeping the cone on the tube. And you can do a couple things here. You can get a stapler, which unfortunately I do not have right now. Or you can get glue. Put glue on this side, like get some really tough glue. Let it sit there and dry, and it will stay. Since I don't have either at the moment, I am just going to tape it. Smith likes to tape a lot of things, doesn't she? So you take one side. <laughs> okay. See how I taped it on one side? Boop, 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 boop. Beep, beep. Boop. Nice to meet ya. I'm gonna be a rocket ship. How about you? <laughs> oh, now that I gave it a voice, maybe I should give it some googly eyes. <laughs> huh. Seriously, where are my googly eyes? No. Oh. I could get some googly eyes. Hmm, how much time have we got? Oh, we're almost at the 30 minute mark. You know what? Let's do it. Let's get some googly eyes. Okay, look at that. So why do we have our rocket? Let's get those googly eyes. When I was a little girl, there was a show that was called Roly Poly Oly. And it was about a little boy that was a roly-poly, and in his world, everything had eyes and a mouth. Everything was alive. And they taught him oh so many different things. It's a very popular show indeed. Okay, I'm going to put that, see, it's all just tape. Let's go bugger all over the place. Ah! Dang it. Come on! Stay! <laughs> oh well. I like that popping sound it made. <laughs> okay. I'm trying a little bit more tape. Okay, we ready for the eyes? You know what? I do have a glue stick. It's not quite the glue ideal for googly eyes, honestly. But it will work. So I'm putting two things right there. Also, this is being glued on top of the the tape, so it might not be too terribly easy. Oof. If I had some hot glue, that would be the best. Which I do have a hot glue gun. But unfortunately, we're about to run out of time. Hang tight. We'll be right back in just a second. Close your eyes. And ta-da! <laughs> and here you see, in the wonderful world of creativity and make-believe, we have a rocket. So the rhombus at the bottom, and the cone at the top. <laughs> I'm a rocket. I'm a rocket. I'm a rocket. How are you? How are you today? I'm a rocket. Ah! <laughs> oh, dang, now I want to give him a mouth. <laughs> Let's call it quits there for now. You'll know, run by the idea some more and touch them up and bring them back on the show next week. <laughs> Maybe we can pick out a name for them. <laughs> All right. That is our fun segment. Help me check off fun part. And we're moving on to our word of the day. Now, a little special announcement. Starting next week, we are going to pull up two words for our words of the day. One word a little word for our little friends and then a big word with this definition for our big friends now if you're not sure what a definition is a definition tells you what a word means so we'll have a word that we'll use in a sentence and then we will have the vocabulary word for the big kids and then an explanation of what that word means alrighty so we've done our fun time check 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 <laughs> 
fight the fun letters, I'm having fun again. <laughs> All right, so you want to help me call Janela? Can you do your best bird impression? Ready? Let's call her. Janela. Janela. And here she is. Here she is. And she is here with our word for the day. What is our word? Wait. Oh, hi. Hey, well, Auntie, where you been? Hi. <coughs> Phew, I kind of dozed off a little bit there, but here I am. I want to help with today's word of the day. <laughs> Welcome back, Andy. Thank you. So, you want to help us with the words of the day? Yes. All right, go ahead. Janila, what is the word of the day? Thank you. H. A. I think you need to turn it around, buddy. Oh, right, yeah, sorry. H A V E. Have. The word of the day is have. We have a word. <laughs> Did that count as our sentence? Well, we do have one uh, on the board that we can use. You have a board we can use to fill one out. I want to help with that. That sounds great. I could really use your help today. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Also, I got a joke for you later. Okay, okay. That sounds good. So, word of the day, and then a quick joke from Andy. Yeah. What's that voice? Oh, there it is. All right. All right, I'm going to read it for you. You ready, friends? Miss Mithril and Auntie hope all their friends have a fun weekend. And this is totally true, friends. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We both hope that you have a great weekend, friends. All right. So, you ready for your joke? Are you ready for my joke? <laughs> Where should you park your rocket when you're in space? Park your rocket when you're in space. Now the question is, is are you already parked? No. Like on a planet? No, 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 no. Where should you just where should you park your parking meter? You park your rocket on I don't know. I think that what, on a parking meteor. <laughs> okay. You get it? Cause you know, we have parking meters, meteor, yeah, yeah. Play on words. You can use that, kids. <laughs> All right, friends. Thank you. See ya. See ya. See ya. We hope you had a great day today. And if you come up with any creative ideas, please let us see them. We would love to see your work. All right. So we have done word time. We're done. Help me check off word time real quick. And check. All righty. So, whether you're flying a kite flying in a plane, or just looking up at the clouds that are floating by. Have a great weekend. Remember, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Take care, little superheroes. Bye! <laughs>